So I have the uh, the mini jet collar that uh, showed up and the, the four spacers for the jet pump are gonna go on the back side here, actually like so, so that the uh, the pump spacing is correct. So I'll uh, I'll start mounting the pump now, get it in its final location, which will help with getting the drive shaft lined up properly or a pump shaft. And then once the pump shaft is lined up in there, I can weld this collar <clears throat> onto the intake and uh, <clears throat> get the bearing mounted. Once that's aligned, then I can start, start on the engine mounts. So here's that. Before I mount the pump in there, I'm gonna clean up the impeller just a little bit. As you can see, there's a, uh, <clears throat> get up real close here. There's a little bit of notches here that are protruding from the uh, from the sides. It looks like it might cause cavitation or just not be so efficient from a flow perspective. So I'm gonna clean those up. Got my 15 millimeter long spacers, long girder spacers, or bolts. Like a glove. So you can see the jet pump spacers are installed now. It's not fully tight yet, but I just need to uh, tighten it up now. And that should allow for the proper spacing to the, uh, to the intake. I got new uh, 10 millimeter by 1.25 bolts to cinch this thing down. So I just gotta tighten it up.
Now that the pump is installed, I just have to pull the engine out so that I can slide the pump shaft forward so that I can put the collar on the intake right there. Once it's on there, then I can weld it and uh, then start working on the engine alignment. So I've clamped the, uh, the collar down so that it's as close to concentrically lined up to the uh, jet pump as possible. I use a square here to ensure that this surface is perpendicular to the side of the intake. And uh, now I just gotta weld it up. Figured I'd uh, show you guys the, the welding setup that I purchased specifically for this project and had to install a sub panel over there just so I could run it. And then uh, a 50 amp circuit through the attic so that uh, it actually power on and not trip circuits. So it's a uh, Neverlast Power MIG 230i with a Parker DSP 360 spool gun. So it's a, it's a pretty nice setup, but it doesn't much matter because I'm absolutely awful at welding aluminum. So you can see that these are pretty boogery looking, but uh, should look good once I grind them down. Nobody will ever know. So here's, uh, here's finishing welding the, the collar. Okay, so the carrier bearing flange is installed. Now I'm just gonna put a little bit of the Sika Marine Epoxy in between the bearing surface and the collar.
So it turns out that the motor mount spacing needs to be two and a, two and a quarter inches from this stringer so that the uh, pump shaft can line up correctly. So in order to get that with the aluminum I have laying around, I have to take off an inch and 15 sixteenths so that it can, so that I can bend this down to where it's perpendicular with the surface so that I have two and a quarter inches. And then I'll weld this plate in and then drill and tap it and uh, that'll be my motor mount. So here's cutting this huge piece off. Okay, so the piece of aluminum is cut to where it will be two and a quarter inches tall whenever installed, or just shy of, so then I can show it up. So now I just gotta weld this channel in, or spot weld it here and there, and then uh, cut it into the sections that will work for the motor mount. So the motor mount's built, I just have to cut it into four equal sections to accommodate the four motor mounts and uh, get the spacing correct and then weld it to the stringer. So uh, here's that. And to get the spacing correct, I need an inch and 15 16 spacer and these two square stocks work perfectly. So I'm just gonna use the chop saw to get them square and then uh, use this as my spacer. So now that the motor mount is complete and the spacer is complete, I just have to cut this long piece into three separate pieces, which will come out to 6.66 inches long as the total length is 20 inches. Once that's done, I'll have to build one more out of this plate. So here's uh, cutting these. I think it's time for a new chop saw. Yep. Smoking good.
Okay, so the motor mounts are complete. I still have yet to fully weld them in place, but uh, Chris and I basically got the motor concentrically lined up to the pump through the use of these podunk feeler gauges by two and 11 thousandths all the way around the pump shaft. So basically you just go all the way around measuring, ensuring that there's uh, no excess gap. And uh, yeah, so now we have center punched the motor mounts. We just have to drill and tap them. And the shims, as you can see right there, are installed. So uh, the motor's in. Here's, uh, here's drilling and tapping this. and tapped all of the motor mounts they are now in their place looking extra boogery we just got to put the motor onto the motor mounts and then uh, put the bolt I can't reach put the bolt into the thing and, and uh, shim the front shim the front yes so uh, something like that all right here's that All right, so the motor's officially in. The, uh, the motor mounts, which were repurposed from a 42 rack unit, two post server rack, uh, came in handy. So good luck, I had a good thing that I had that, that aluminum server rack, because I uh, got a good bit of aluminum off of it. But now that the engine's in, I just have to figure out the wiring harness, extend it where it needs to be extended, figure out the fuel cell, the steering, and then the water box set up as yet to come. So um, yeah, the next video will be sorting out the, the wiring harness and all of the steering controls, the fuel cell, and the, uh, the water box for all the, the line routing. So yeah, this is done or the motor is in, I should say. Far from done. <laughs>